If you think your PhD is a disaster, just relax. The first thing you should do is stop. Stop acting, stop doing, stop panicking, just relax. Now it's easier said than done, but I think everyone at some point has felt like a project they are doing, and definitely someone in a PhD has felt that their PhD is gonna be a disaster. And you can't help those running thoughts in your mind. Your mind is just there to keep you safe. And unfortunately, sometimes it misfires and it says, oh my God, this is gonna be a massive disaster. Now I am one for catastrophizing as well. My mind races, this is gonna define me as a person, it's gonna define my life, I'm a massive failure. All of that goes through my mind. But the good thing is, is that it is almost certainly not true. One of the best things you can do is start to be objective about your situation. Now talking to someone is very important. They can actually sort of like give you an outsider's perspective of how things are really going. But if you don't have someone or you don't feel comfortable speaking to someone, there is a simple technique that you can use that I've used a few times. And what it is, is to brain spill. So just spend 10 minutes allowing all of those thoughts outside of your head, allow it to write down on a piece of paper and just like just brain spill. Don't edit, don't think about it, just get it all out of your mind onto a nice piece of paper. And then take a moment to reflect. What on that paper is objectively true? What is you looking into the future to stuff that isn't even happening yet, that is something that you know, you're, you've created in your own mind? Um, and also just going through and being like, okay, well this is objective, like I don't have enough time, or well even that, like what is enough? The objective thing is I have two years or I have one year left. Like that is the objective thing about that statement. And so going through and just pairing it back also gives you the ability to just reflect. Another thing that really helps me calm down if I feel like my PhD or a project is gonna be a disaster, objectivity and the word yet. Now the word yet just gives you a little bit of a chance to pause and also reminds you that things change. One thing about that feeling of disaster is you feel like the disaster is imminent and it's permanent. That is not true. Almost certainly that's not true. What I, what I love about the word yet is it just reminds you that things can change. So, oh my God, I'm gonna fail my PhD or I don't have enough data yet. Oh my God, uh, my supervisor hasn't got back my thesis yet. All of these things just can be resolved by the word yet. I've said that so much now, it sounds weird. Yet, yet, gross. Identify what is actually wrong. Do you know what, sometimes I feel weird, I feel panicky, I feel anxious about something. And this happens like in life and as you get older, like me, it certainly happens more and more frequency where you go through life and you're like, oh my God, something's wrong. And then you realize it was a small little trigger earlier on in the day that sort of like, cause this cascade of thoughts that gets bigger and bigger and you go, okay, well the reason I feel like this is because someone was rude to me earlier on. Like something like that can really help you just reflect. So yes, the first thing if you think anything is a disaster and your PhD is going to be a disaster, just reflect, be objective and think about the changes you can make with the word yet. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstaveton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content you can only get on that free email list, so go sign up now. The sooner you can identify the issues and act on those issues, the better. So after you've taken a moment to reflect, you must I ultimately identify why you are feeling like your PhD is gonna become a disaster. Now, it could be supervisor issues, it could be data issues, it could be timing issues, it could be um, procrastination issues. Like, you have to work out for you what it is that is causing this cascade of thoughts. Now, acting as soon as you can is important. Now, we're not talking about rushing. Acting means making a plan, making a plan for how you can make sure that you do not repeat the same mistake 
mistakes you've just made going forward. Now, if you don't have enough data, you can double down on the stuff that is working. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, if it is a supervisor issue, what things can you put in place to make sure your supervisor responds well? Like it's a more of an engineering task, I think this. It's about engineering your situation so that you don't repeat the same thing. Procrastinating, put on blockers to block all of those uh, all those sites. I've got a blocker at the moment for Reddit because I just cannot get away from Reddit. Um, all of these things are engineering your life so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. And acting sooner rather than later will mean that uh, you have plenty of time to undo the issues that you've found. Now, the thing is, is that sometimes you find out this far too late. Like you find this out in your middle of your third year or fourth year. Now, the good thing is, Late means you just have to extend your PhD a little bit. I'm not a huge fan of that, but you can engineer your PhD so that you don't feel that dread. You can extend it. There are always always ways to extend it. Speak to your supervisor, speak to the university, speak to the dean. All these people want you to succeed. So if you identify an issue and you realize you need an extra six months, you can sort of engineer your PhD for that. So yes, engineer your surroundings, engineer stuff so you don't repeat the same mistakes that you've objectively identified are the issue. And sometimes there is no issue. And the objective kind of process that you need to engineer is, okay, I need to do more of the same, but a little bit faster, or I need to do more of the same, just as is. And that's absolutely fine as well. Engineer it, create a routine. Um, I've got plenty of videos on that, go check them out. One thing I really like to do if I'm feeling like something's gonna be a disaster is zoom out from the problem. Now here's the thing about PhDs that probably not a lot of people want to tell you, but it's an absolute truth. The thing that gets you a PhD is other people saying, yes, this person has done enough to get a PhD. That is your examiners for your thesis, that is other people on the board of your university, like all of those people just have to give you the tick of approval. Now the great thing about that is that it doesn't mean you have to produce world class, amazing Einstein level results, right? What it means is you contribute to a field enough so that someone goes, oh, this is new and interesting. Yeah, that's enough. Like that is all it is. So don't worry about being like having these amazing results that you need to sort of show the world. You don't have to break any world records. It only has to be new and interesting. That's kind of like the lowest level of a PhD, but a PhD is a PhD. And once again, there are people that decide this. So just relax and just realize that it is data, it is results, it is your analysis. Even if something has failed over and over and over again, collect data, look for opportunities to explore an area so that you can say, yes, like this failed, but here's the reasons why. And then that sort of um, that uh, sort of uh, analysis and path can actually open up more opportunities, more questions that is actually interesting. So the people on the other side go, yes, this person deserves a PhD. So don't panic. One of the biggest things that people find with their PhD is they don't have enough data. Early on, people get sidetracked very, very easily. And disaster strikes once you realize that moving slow early on in your PhD causes you to fall behind dramatically. Things aren't lost, but collecting data should be your number one tool. Go read those books, do those things in the lab, whatever it is, collect information. Your brain will, will sort it out, you will start to understand it, but look for opportunities to go deeper. That is what a PhD is all about. Sometimes when we feel like there's a disaster, we're scurrying around on the surface of the information. We're like, oh, over here, oh, over here, oh, over here. No, relax. A PhD is about going deep. Look for opportunities to explore. If something's working particularly well, go deep on that subject. That will help you um, kind of find your novel, new, interesting contribution to a field, not scurrying rapidly. And when we do panic, we do kind of just go for the easy stuff, but no, relax, look for those opportunities to go deep. And remember, it's all about data, 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 presenting data, talking about data, showing new data. All of that is what a PhD is really about. So if you feel like your PhD is gonna be a disaster, stop, relax, be objective look at the surface level, don't move too far, where are the opportunities to explore deeper? That 
is your contribution to the field then? Um, and sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not so obvious, but uh, yes, don't panic and start scurrying and changing big ideas and going from here to here to here. Go deep on something that's working. The last point is that you should seek help not necessarily from your supervisor. There are a certain number of levels that you can go through if you feel like your PhD is gonna be a disaster. The first one is from your peer group. Talk openly about how you feel. If your PhD feel like it's falling behind, slipping behind, they will almost certainly feel the same way. That's not to say you can all sit there in your kind of like, well, we're all gonna fail kind of mental attitude, but it's about lifting everyone up. You know, talking with your peers, other PhD students, other post Stocks as well can really help you decide on what to do, where to take your research, and also ultimately to give you the confidence that, yeah, you're not there yet, but you will be in the future. And that's very important from saving your mental state from that feeling of disaster. Um, supervisors are very useful. That you know, they are ultimately the people that dictate the quality and the ease of your PhD. So speaking to them early on about how you are feeling is very important. If you don't feel comfortable talking to your supervisors, speak to co-supervisors, speak to postdocs, other senior members or researchers in the lab, that is very important as well. So seek help. Um, deans and university level should only really be approached if there is something you can't resolve a sort of a lower down. And uh, disaster is a very emotive word. So um, I often like don't like to call anything a disaster. There's a new challenge, there's a new opportunity, like reframing it a little bit with the people around you. And also, you know, your supervisor can actually help you sort of come out of the disaster zone and enter into something much more creative. Because when your mind is in danger zone, you can't be creative, you can't explore, you can't actually enjoy your PhD at all. If this video has been useful to you, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you like the channel, there'll be plenty more PhD advice coming your way. Also, go check out academiainsider.com. That is my new project for this year where I help academics become better. That's the home of my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, and my Insider Forum. So go check it out, and I shall see you in the next video.